the River Church is where I found purpose. At the River Church, I found my confidence. At the River Church, I found life. At the River Church, I received guidance. At the River Church is where I found truth. At the River Church is where I understood accountability. At the River Church is where I was fully restored. At the River Church is where I found peace. At the River Church is where I found stability. At the River Church is where I found my identity. At the River Church is where I found change. At the River Church is where I grew. At the River Church. 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 A heart that forgives, a heart full of 
One that men can offend because your word is offend. One that loves without price like you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good evening, everyone. Welcome here to the River Church Bible Study. We welcome you here. You by way of internet. We're so glad that you decided to join us this evening. I'm telling you, you're in for a treat tonight. Amen. As our bishop will come forth tonight, and he will teach the word of God with power and simplicity so that you're able to understand what it is that the Lord is saying to the church in this day and this time. Let us pray. Lord, we bless you. We give you the glory, the honor, and the praise. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you have done, Lord how you kept us through the years, Lord, how you brought us into this place for such a time as this to hear the word of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for the season that you have us in. We thank you that you have us in a season of awakening where you're causing our eyes to be open, Lord, to another dimension of your glory, your wisdom, and your understanding, causing us to know the truth, Lord. And we thank you even for this month, Lord, and how you're declaring the power that is in the name of Jesus, Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for, for causing us to have clarity in this month concerning the word of the Lord. And we thank you, Lord, for all those who are, are, are listening and tuning in to this word tonight. We thank you, Lord, that deliverance shall come through this word even on tonight. We thank you that healing shall come through this word even on tonight. And we're so excited, Lord, to see what it is that you're going to do in your people. And for this, Lord, we give you the glory and we give you the honor and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. You know, this is just a, a great and exciting time in the Lord. Amen. God is just an awesome God. And I'm telling you, God has just been speaking to us in this house. And as we say, we're in this month of power in the name of Jesus. And I just believe, amen, that God doesn't just speak just to be speaking. Amen. God is going to do something miraculous in this place tonight. So I'm telling you, just hold on to your seats, open up your hearts and your spirits, amen, and get ready, get ready, get ready for what the Lord will do in this place tonight. Amen. Are you ready for what the Lord is going to do? Amen. Amen. I'm, I'm excited. Amen. Because God is speaking a word that will cause us to be able to advance. And he's setting us up for a miracle. Amen. So hold on to your seats. God is getting ready to speak a word. Amen. Amen. We thank God for you that are here and you can be seated. Thank God for all of you. How y'all doing? Doing good? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. Hey, man, I'm so glad you asked. I got the opportunity to testify. Amen to the authenticity of God. God is, as I heard Minister Curtis saying, there's a lot of stuff. Things are changing. And I think as we continue to uh, embrace what God is saying in this season, uh, you're going to start seeing miracles, signs, and wonders because God is going to show you that he's not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. If he say things, he would do it. If he spoke it, he brings it to pass. And so we thank him for that. Um, been on this series talking about the power, and I'm telling you, me, I uh, pretty much, when I hear power, <laughs> I mean, I just like powerful things. 
you know, any of you ever had a powerful car or you've seen a powerful race car, man, when that car, uh, you know it has power. Once you accelerate it, you can see that it has the power to move. Oh, see my, it has the power to move. And I was thinking about this power and how I said on Monday night, I believe it was, that uh, I, I believe God is uh, changing things and bringing us into a new era in this gospel. And I believe once we embrace where he want, what he want us to embrace, you're going to come out ahead. You're going to come out on top. You're not going to be a lender. Uh, a borrower, you're going to be a lender. You're not going to be the tail, but you're going to be the head. And I think when God does things like that, it is because he wants you to know that you belong to him. He always wants us to know he belongs to us. So we thank God for that. Oh, so much, I don't even know where to jump into all of this. <laughs> you know, sometimes you're kind of looking where to start because... Uh, Sometimes, this is what's amazing me, most people don't believe they have enough. But when you look at the Bible, God always use what you got. He stretched what it is that you already have. You see the woman with the, uh, that said she was old, uh, she, she had no money, the creditors was going to come take her son. And the woman said, uh, uh, he said, what's in your house? Jesus asked them when they wanted to know how, how we're going to feed this multitude. He, they, they said, we only have a lad with two fish and five loaves. And he said, bring them and make the people sit down. I don't think God wants you to have an abundance just to prove to you that he can do it. I was thinking about a passage today. I'll try to show you how they go together later. And if you don't get it, then go Google or something. I don't know. You'll figure it out somewhere. But uh, Matthew 23, I heard the Lord say this to me. And I read it, and I think I know what he was saying. Matthew 23, verse 1. Then Jesus spake to the multitude and to his disciples, saying, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. All, their, uh, all therefore, whatsoever they bid you observe, that observe and do it, but do not after their works. For they say and do not. For they bind heavy burdens and grievous, and grievous to be born, and lay them on men's shoulders. But they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. Wow. But all their works they do to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. And love the uppermost room at the feast and the chief seat in the city God. And greetings in the market and to be called of men, Rabbi. That's enough right there. And I was wondering, I was thinking the other night, I remember I mentioned to you guys, I said, uh, how did we end up where we are? How did we get to this place that we don't belong? We start looking at ourselves with self-worth. We felt like we was all that, and we had it. See, the Pharisees act like they had it. Remember, see what it said? He said, they, they tell you good word, but they just don't do it. Hmm. They, they know what's right, but they don't do it. And so I believe Jesus said that he give us power. So why is it that I sometimes won't utilize what he gave me? 
because I lean more to humanism. The Bible said the natural mind can't receive the things of the Spirit of God. They're foolishness to him. In many cases, we won't do something that don't make sense to us. That's why sometimes God can give you a prophetic gesture and your miracle is right in your obedience. But you won't do it because it don't make no sense. You mean to tell me that I got to go take dirt and put it in my eyes? You mean to tell me I got to go down to Jordan and dip seven times in dirty Jordan when there's so many other clean rivers that I could dip in? Why do I have to dip in dirty Jordan? See, this is where, why we miss the power. And as I look, I see where God takes the foolish things of this world to confound the man. You see it all through the Bible. He never does things that make sense to the human mind. Never. I mean, he, he would do things, oh, the man lays at Gate Beautiful. I mean, not Gate Beautiful, at the Pool of Bethesda. He lays there 38 years. And he come, and Jesus come to him, and all he did was tell Jesus what nobody did for him. I'm hearing every time somebody else step in before me. And Jesus said, will you be made whole? He asked him a question. So watch this. So that's a, tell you neighbor, that's a crazy question. Because if I knew how to be made whole, I wouldn't be sick. I wouldn't have been lame this long if I knew what I was supposed to do. And Jesus challenged his way of thinking. And that's what I believe the gospel would do with all of us is challenge our way of thinking. If we're going to really see the power, and I'm, I'm telling you, I see this so clear now. Because every time I've seen a significant miracle, it didn't make no sense. The greatest miracle I ever saw in Jamaica it didn't make no sense. We got a prayer line, and they bring a lady up there on a gurney. And the Holy Spirit said, don't you pray for her. Wait a minute, this is a prayer line. Ain't that why people come up here for you to pray? He said, don't you pray for her. And I'm standing there at the altar puzzled. I don't know what to do. I don't know. They might stone me. <laughs> if I walk away and don't pray for this lady... We up here praying for miracles. And, and he said, don't you pray for her. And as I stood there in obedience, I knew I couldn't pray for her because God said, don't pray for her. And, and as I stood there, I just heard a song, oh, the glory of your presence will your feet forgive your reverence. So arise from your red feet, bless me. And when I started singing that song, it seemed like the whole church got on one accord. And look like, man, people were just singing that song and look like the tent filled halfway with smoke. I ain't never seen nothing like that before. And watch this. Because I obeyed, he said, take her by the hand and lift her up. Now, I took the lady by the hand. She got up off the gurney. And the place went up and there was pandemonium. They went crazy in that place. Now, watch what God did. God never wants you to get the credit for it. See, that's what the Pharisees did. They do all the, they sit on Moses' seat. They tell the people probably what Moses told them, but they don't do it. But they want to see the, the power. They want to see the, the results of what it is that probably Moses saw. They said they sit on Moses' seat. And so I was thinking about this. I'm like, so if I can't get beyond me, you would never see him. If I can't get beyond, if I can't deny me, remember, the, remember Jesus said, I must, uh, uh, John the Baptist, I, think, so I must decrease so he can increase. So basically what he was saying, I must come to an end of me. And like I told you, when I was at that revival, I had to come to an end of doing things the way we do it in church. Because we think God can't heal unless we put oil on them and, and we scream and holler, you know, because they, they get in the marketplace and they do all of these things to be seen of men. 
And so when you pray for someone, do you pray for them in humility or do you pray and scream and throw oil like you got power? <laughs> because if you have power, you don't have to pretend. In the name of Jesus, rise and walk. Look at, that's, isn't that what Peter and John did at Gate Beautiful? They didn't scream. They didn't holler. I've seen Paul heal people. They didn't scream and they didn't holler. But look at our church. They think, boy, if they're praying for something, they got to scream. They got to sling or they have to act like a wild person. Oh, you coming out today. Oh, I got a power over you. Da, 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 da. You could, yo, in the name of Jesus, come out. And so looking at where God has us right now, power in the name of Jesus. So if I was anyone that's a part of the River Church, I would spend extensive time learning how to utilize what I have. He said, I behold, I give you power, right? I don't have to pray for the power. I need him to teach me how to use it. I always use the example of iPhones and iPads. These things have ability that I've never tapped into. I mean, one of the phones, they talk about the capability of the camera, how these cameras can take quality pictures. You think I use that quality picture? I don't even know what, that, what to do with the feature. You can edit pictures on your phone. You can do a lot of things with these phones now, but I don't know nothing about it because I've never taken the time to learn. I believe in this season, power in the name of Jesus. And he said in Luke 10, 19, behold, I give unto you power. Acts 2, 38, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you and you shall be witnessing. Say, so when you repent and be baptized, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So now if I have it, he said I have it, right? You know, most people say you got the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I got the Holy Ghost. Rabbi Kosor, the Rabbi Hosha. We got the tongues down packed. We said, that's the evidence we got the Holy Ghost. But do I know how to execute on his behalf? Do I know how to bring myself to a place like Peter and Paul where God can use me to, to be a blessing to people and use the power that's already in the earth that he's given unto men? I'm going to use this power not for my glory, not to try to be seen, not to act like I'm anybody, but I'm using this power to glorify the name of Jesus. See, that's what God is looking for. A person, now watch this. Now look at this. In this generation that we live in, what's the worst spirit that operate in the land right now? Spirit of pride. 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 Pride, pride, pride. <laughs> and, and watch this. So this spirit of pride have us in a place that when we do anything, we want the credit for it. Now, if, say, you went and did a miracle, and I didn't know you done the miracle, and I went and, and I was in the place, I said, man, I heard about the miracle on on last week, and man, God really used this man of God over here to work a miracle in this house. It would take everything in you not to correct me. Come on, tell the truth. No, that wasn't him. That was me. I'm the miracle worker, the promise keeper, the light. Of that. <laughs> because why? Because even though we do it uh, uh, we do it, uh, we're not conscious, unconsciously we do it, but we want credit for everything we do. If there's a move, uh, you can have a prayer meeting. Ooh, last night we went into prayer and God moved. You said God moved, but you're going to tell me after you said God moved, you're going to start telling me what you did. Oh, we just came together and we did this and we did. had nothing to do with that. It was God's timing. Everything works on God's timing. And when we understand God's timing, 
then I walk by faith and not by sight. I walk as an instrument that God can use my life for his glory. God taught me this. I learned this. That's why I remember when I first got saved, if I heard you were sick, I was coming. I had to come pray for you because I know God going to heal this a healer. So it, it's not even biblical. Because he, the Bible said when there's any sick, let them call for the elders of the church. And watch this. Jesus didn't heal everybody. There was many widow women in the day when he, but he only sustained the woman at Zarephath. There was many lepers in Naaman's day, but he only healed, it's in the Bible, he only healed Naaman the leper. And so, am I in a place that I'm sensitive enough that I would do, nevertheless, not as I will, but let your will be done? I'm not, I'm not doing anything unless I know it's the heart of God. I had to share with someone today a principle. Because, see, sometimes we can get so caught up in the way we always have done things. That's one of the things I'm trying to break at the River Church, that we don't get caught up in the fact. And I watch people. We can get in a worship service. The glory of God is in the house. And you can watch the people, if you try to push them sometime beyond those three songs, well, I'm waiting on the word. I, I, I know you got a word today, Bishop. But what if the word has already come forth in worship? What if that's, that's what God was saying? That, that I just want y'all to stay before me in worship. But you, I, I want to hear what Bishop got. Bishop got to have that word. Today. I know Bishop got a word today. I know Bishop got a word. No, but what does God want? I was sharing, because we were talking about the meeting in, in North Carolina. I said, let me tell you something about me. I said, I don't even know what's going to happen in that service. I said, we can start out in worship, and I said, it could just go from there. I said, it might not never be a preach word, but there'll be a move. I said, that's how we, I flow. I said, I don't come in with an agenda because I studied, and I have a word, I believe, for the revival. If God scratched that word, I'm going with God. Because you want to see people healed delivered and set free and that's where church now while we can't see the power we've not made room for God we got our little organizations and we have our little way of thinking and the little way we do things and anytime something go venture outside of that we shut down what mean is this we done did praise and worship when they gonna preach and then they don't say when bishop gonna preach when they gonna preach Somebody got to preach, I mean, because that's what's supposed to be happening next. And so it's amazing to me to see how we have these abilities. It's almost like you have so much. See, that's what the Bible says. You have this treasure in an earthen vessel. And so the reason we are like this, watch this. The reason we do these things and we think like this is because we live our life like this. This is my normal behavior. I don't see the treasure that's in me. He said, we have this treasure in earthen vessels and the excellency of the powers of God and out of us. So we have so much God has invested inside of you that we've never took the time to tap into the, the giftings and the talents that God has put in us because we're so caught up in thinking we okay. And so think about it. So now, if I live my life like that, how am I going to walk in the Spirit? Because it's a, it's a pattern. Remember we talked about uh, 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 systems of operation and how we systematically live our life. So now, come on, tell the truth. Most of the stuff you do, you do it systematically. We can set the clock on when you do whatever you do. You get up this time. You do this when you get up. The, the, and, and then sometime the night before, if you know you're going to work, you got your little breakfast already set up here. This is what I'm going to do. You got everything. Ain't nothing wrong with that. You, you need a plan. But look at how you have programmed yourself 
to live systematically. So then the Bible said we walk by faith and not by sight. We as many as led by the Spirit of God or the sons of God. So how am I going to be led when I'm so systematic? If it don't make sense to me, I can't do it. And God never makes sense. Who would have said God would have chose somebody like me to pastor? That's a joke by itself. Tell you, God got a sense of humor. I mean, God got a sense of humor. Who, who, I know you're wonderful, but I'm talking about me. But I'm talking about me. Who would have said the thought that God would have took me when he had so many more, more qualified people? But, you know, we're quoted, God don't call the equip, he equip the call, you know. But, but no, we, we are really stuck in formalities. We're stuck in formality. And so I believe that's why this year is the year of awakening. Because if we're going to get out of this, we got to wake up. First, you got to come to yourself. Remember the prodigal son? I, so, I think somebody talked about him on Monday. Uh, the prodigal son. How when he found himself where he didn't belong, it said he came to himself. He said, look, here I am eating the husk that the swine wouldn't eat. And my father has... I mean, I could be a hired servant and live better than this. So he came to himself, and he said, I'm going home. See, if we really come to ourselves and see that in many cases, you don't flow in no power. Stop telling people, you got power. I got power. I got yes, you have power, but are you utilizing it? No, because most of us don't know how to use it. We don't know how to use the ability God gave us because God will not let you heal who he don't want to heal. God won't let you deliver who he don't want to deliver. So the only way you're going to see power is when you're sensitive to God to know what is it God want to do in the earth at this particular season. Think about it. You look at Paul's life. I, I, we talk about it. Paul was heading to one place, and the Spirit bade him, said, don't go there. I want you to go here. And Paul didn't even hesitate. He turned. Oh, see, that's what repentance is when you turn. He turned and he followed the Spirit of God and he saw enormous results. He saw things happen that didn't make no sense. Why? Why did he see these things happen? Because God leads us to the place he wants to heal and the place he wants to deliver. And that's where I think we're challenged is that we can't uh, get to the place that we understand that, that God will only do what it is that he has preordained that he's going to do. He's not going to do what I want him to do. I don't care. That's why you can see people sometimes, they're so wonderful, and you want to see them healed. That don't mean God's going to heal them. Because when he heal them, are they going to serve the Lord or are they going back to do what they always did? Everything God do is for his glory. And so when we look at this power in his name, it's an authority given to the believer. God give this authority. Now watch this. When you first seen the church established, was not it established in power? It was established in power power. They demonstrated the power. They didn't demonstrate church because they didn't have no churches. They didn't have no church buildings. They demonstrated the power of the Holy Ghost from day one. The day they started ministry after Jesus' departure, they walked in authority. We get saved and we go to church. Let's talk. Come on, don't look at me like that. We get, and, and most people don't want to do nothing. All they want to do is go to church. Keep eating the word. Keep talking about the goodness of God. And have do nothing for the kingdom. After you've been converted, go strengthen your brother. And so we get caught in the sin of complacency. I was listening at someone preach this week, and it was, it was deep. I like deep preachers. They be deep and then I pull something simple out of what they said. Because in Revelation, it talks about John. And, and I was looking at this. 
And it says, when John went to the island of Patmos, when you do your studies, they said all the rest of the disciples had already died. He was the longest, longest living disciple, John. And so here he is, almost like Elisha. He's, he's, he's the only one left. <laughs> So God gives him a vision, and he starts looking at the churches. God shows him the condition of the churches, and he found, you see, the churches, all of them has become complacent. Remember, he said, you did this, you did that, but I have a problem with you. You, you forgot your first day. It was something they left undone. Even though they had good qualities, they left some things undone. And so when you start thinking about this, uh, let's don't talk about Peter and them. Let's, uh, what have you left undone? See, nobody want to say nothing right here. Y'all ain't even get one amen. amen. <laughs> so, so how many things have you left undone because you got so busy with church, so busy with religion, so busy just saying, praise the Lord, hallelujah, ooh, what that service, powerful today, and then you go home, and that's the end of your Christianity until you get back next week. Anyway, let me look at that. Yeah, watch it. So, in, in, in Revelation 3, it says, unto the church, angel of the church of Sardis, Revelation 3 and 1, I'm not going to read much. By the time you get there, I'll be done. I want to bring out a principle. These things said he that has seen, has, uh, has the seven spirits of God and the seven stars. I know thy works and that thou has a name. See? <laughs> you have a name. We talk about the power in his name, but you don't establish your name. Because when you come to church, everybody know you are learning. Yes, Lord, you are. Ooh, they are so anointed. Ooh, ain't nothing like. You did y'all see when that minister sung that song the other night? Talking about the miracle working power of God. Ooh, the glory was on that minister, wasn't it? <laughs> and so, so, so we, we, now all of a sudden, my name is associated with results. Everybody look at me. Ooh, he's a powerful preacher. And if you're not careful, you'll, get, you'll start entertaining that spirit. But you ought to always point back to know it's not me, it's him. It's in him that I live moving. You never take credit for what God does. And that's how the enemy creep in and so tears because we all like to be celebrated. Come on. Who don't like to be celebrated? That's why we have birthday parties. <laughs> that's the day everybody going to celebrate me. <laughs> you know, we want to be celebrated. So don't be sitting there like you don't want to be celebrated. I don't care if nobody. Yes, you do. Your birthday come. If nobody gave you nothing, a card or nothing, ooh, then don't let them celebrate someone else's birthday. When it was their birthday, I saw them bringing cakes and pies, and, and they brought them in front of the church. But when it was my, I know I'm messing, I'm meddling right now. But when, <laughs> I know I'm meddling right now. <laughs> but when it was my birthday, they didn't bring me in front of the church like they did that sister back there. I ain't calling no name on camera. They brought them in front. They had balloons and cake and everything. But on my birthday, ain't nobody celebrate me. Mmm. So you have, yeah, you want to be celebrated. Don't lie. You want to be, everybody want to be celebrated. But this is how we lose focus because we get so captured with the, uh, with the validation of men. People telling me I'm good. People telling me I'm, I'm, um, I'm the best. So, so, so he said, you have a name that you live in, but you're dead. You have a name that you have it together, but you know you don't have it together. I don't know about y'all. I tell people all the time. I know I don't have it. But look, it said, be watchful and strengthen. Be watchful. Pay attention. Wake up. And strengthen the things that remain that are ready to die. For I have found your works perfect before God. I have, not, I have not found your word perfect before God. So I'm done with Revelation. I know you don't want to see no more of that no way. My point in bringing that out was this. 
they had become complacent. I know ain't none of y'all in here like that. Nobody in here like that. They ain't complacent. They always they are very innovative. They are spontaneous. They they always got pursuing greater and better and more. <laughs> But they have become so complacent. A good church. They were a good church. Jesus told them all the good things that Paul, uh, through John, he told them. He said, ah, you, 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 you're awesome right here. You do a, you, it's good you pray all the time. But when you get through and say, amen, what you do? Oh, I pray every morning and I pray. And you're supposed to. But what did God tell you after that to go do? Who did God tell you to go bless? Who did God tell you to go pray for? Who did God tell you to go uh, lead? It amazes me the respect that people that don't even go to church have for church. Today, I just made an apostolic. I didn't even get with the board. <laughs> you know, you just get sick of stuff. And that door back there was pathetic. Dragging, scraping the bottom of it, and it's just like, I guess I got to do everything anyway. So I just called the doorman yesterday, and he came out today. And I listened at this man when he got here. He, he just was so humble. Oh, it's going to cost us because I need to change this. I said, listen, fix the door. I want it fixed. Don't you cut no shortcut. Fix my door. This one part going to cause it. I don't care. Fix it. I want it fixed. We done tolerated this long enough. Fix it. Terrence got shocked. He thought he caught the Holy Ghost. He said when he opened that door tonight, he, he, he like twitched because he didn't know what was wrong. It wasn't pulling strong, but it closed by itself, don't it? It'll close by itself. You don't have to touch it. And he fixed it to the point once you loose them things in the bottom. Remember how he used to hang up? Oh, you let it go now. It's going to close and lock. <laughs> You're going to get locked out. <laughs> You're going to get locked out. I'm telling y'all now. But my point is, I listened. And then up to the end when he left. Oh, I should, you know, I, 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 it was about three hours or more. You know, I think I saw you pass by one time. <laughs> but uh, but, but three, I, I, like that, I saw, but, but he was over here, over, I should have thought I started for more labor, but this is a church. I'm not, no, I said, do you, man? I said, well, just give me my building when you finish and leave. No, no, this is the house of God. God bless you, man of God. I, I'm not going to charge for this. I'm not going to charge for that. I'm just going to charge you for the parts. I ain't going to even charge you no label. See, I told y'all, I get blessings all the time. The man charged no label, and he was here three hours. I'm going to just charge for the parts. And I mean, he was adamant, respectful to the church and the church people that done got complacent. <laughs> I'm going on. This is, a, this is an encouraging message. But that happens every time someone comes. I know a guy now that put our new unit in years ago. That new unit up there is probably almost old now, but he put a brand new unit up. He wouldn't charge me nothing for but for parts. He said, this the house. He said, I believe in God. How am I going to charge God? That's what he said. And I was like, oh, well, I got to pay you something. He said, you won't pay me nothing. He said, I'm doing this unto the Lord, not you. He said, I'm doing this. for The man put, bought that unit, put it in, didn't charge me a dime to put it in. Because it was the church. Don't say nothing, just look across your row at that person that don't never want to do nothing to for the church. <laughs> so that shows me that I have, uh, it's, it looks like I'm living, but I'm dead. Remember what he said about the church at Sardis? He said they looked like they were alive, but they was dead. Now, when you look at Jesus, when he talked about those Pharisees, he said they was walking like dead men bone because they had a form of godliness. And so what God is saying now, when you get complacent, you lose vision. How could you have vision 
and be complacent. Vision shows me, oh, where did I write that today? Let me see. So I seen something today. I wrote something. Where is it? It, it was like, don't, don't lose. When you're a person of vision, you don't want to lose what you have in pursuit of what you see. You want to get what you see, but you want to incorporate it with what I have. You know, I, I don't want to get so focused on where I'm trying to go that I forget where I am. See, that's, that's the point I mean. Sometimes people forget where you are and, and, and not trying to go somewhere. And I thought about a conversation I had with a brother this week. It was talking about because of the business that has sustained him this far, he's not going to jeopardize that for new adventures. And I thought about that. That's when I, I was writing. And I said, oh, that's what we, we were talking about that earlier. And people sometimes lose focus over time. It's easy to lose focus over time. Most people lose focus over time. That's why relationships are so challenging. If you treated them just like you did when you first met them, that relationship will always be on fire. <laughs> Vice versa, I'm talking man and woman. When you first met them, you couldn't keep your, you know, yeah, yeah. you know, you know how it was when you first met, but over time you forget what it was that you were so attracted to the person by. You became complacent. And what you ought to have been doing, you stopped doing it. Oh, I just said, get deliver me, Jesus. Deliver me, Jesus. I mean, deliver Because that's what happened with anyone. You can go to a job, you get complacent. When you first get to the job, you come on time, you do this, you you going beyond everything you're supposed to do it. And after you've been at the job for a while, you go, that ain't none of my job. You go to grumbling, you ain't never. Now you done got complacent because you talk about you've been there all these years and you don't even know how to be innovative anymore because you're so stuck in feeling like you have a sense of ownership, a sense of, yeah, that you, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Entitlement. I've been there so long now. They owe me. But they, they wouldn't be where they are if it wasn't for me. And that's good quality. Because I'm learning even with church. You don't want to get caught up in those that, uh, how do I want to say this? So you got all kind of people coming to church. Let me see. You don't want to get caught up with those that come, uh, how do I want to say this? I'm trying to be nice. Y'all know it's hard for me to do that. Say it, <laughs> say it in a nice way. Sometimes I say stuff that's innocent and then I get in trouble. So I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> but you know, see, there's people that come that are, uh, they, they are, uh, they basically celebrate you. They caught up in the fab, you know, the fab and the fabulous and all this stuff. But then there's other people that are willing to follow. See, there's some that will come as long as everything good. Yeah, as long as everything good, we cool. We cool, but don't you cross me. You okay as long as you agree. You can follow when you agree. But that ain't a real disciple who can just follow when you agree with me. <laughs> can you follow me when you don't agree? Oh, Rick, this church bishop. Because <laughs> you are not a follower if you only can follow when you agree. If I agree with you, oh, that agree with my spirit. Well, when it don't agree with your spirit. When it go against everything you believe in, can you still follow? Because we, remember we talk about God does not do things. You never see what Jesus did the same, a miracle the same way. And so if I can only follow when I agree, then that's going to be a problem. I'm about to help some of y'all. That's why you have so much chaos in relationship. You can't be with each other unless you agree with everything. And ain't no two people going to agree with everything all the time. Never. 
So stop telling people, oh, me and my boo, we just agree with everything. We pray about everything. We don't go to bed mad at night. Liar, liar, liar. Skirts on fire, pants on fire, skirt on fire, boots on fire, everything burning. Somebody get the fire extinguisher. <laughs> you try. See, there you go again. Remember what I said earlier? You're trying to impress people like you got something we don't have. <laughs> you have to come to a place. That when God says something, you focus on the principle. Every text in the Bible, every scripture is, is, is conveying a principle. When Jesus gave the parable of the seed in the soil, it was a principle that he was bringing out. See, if you're going to get this, you got to learn. When I preach, what was Bishop saying? Yeah. Tonight, you ought to can narrow it down to one word. It's a guy I know used to do that. It was so unique. He could sit and listen at any preacher, and he would sum up what the preacher was saying in one sentence, and it was powerful. I might have spent the hour, and this man would learn. He, he studied what I said, and he could take it and put it in one sentence, and you hear that sentence, you'll be like, oh, man, I got it now. Something that took us an hour to try to get to you, he can narrow it down in a sentence. You know why? Because he looked at the principle that was being taught and not just the text. You know, the scripture we read. What is the principle from Revelation? What is the principle from the scriptures that we read? What is God saying to us from those passages? That's how you get where you're trying to go. Okay, uh, so the car, you can't be carnal. Tell somebody you can't be carnal. You can't come to carnal conclusions. <laughs> carnal conclusion. See, you, you don't come to a conclusion that's totally based on your carnality. Ain't no love in the church. Tell your neighbor that's a carnal conclusion. <laughs> I've been wanting to say that for years. Oh, glory to God. That's a carnal conclusion because there's no way love's not in God's house. God is love. That's a carnal conclusion when you say that. I just use that for example. I know none of you say stuff like that. So, let me move on. Oh, that's what I was looking for. So, you're a doll fan. Are you a follower? See, I'm a Heat fan, but I can't say I'm a Heat follower. Because when they start losing, I find me a winning team. <laughs> I'm being frank with you. See, I'm not a <laughs> I'm not a Heat follower. See, you get real dog fans, followers, they don't care win or lose. They follow the team. They support the team. They, they believe in the team. I'm saying something here. Y'all better catch it or you won't get the next thing I'm saying after a while. So when you are a follower of the River Church and you're not just a fan, whether we progressing or things going good or bad, you keep following because you don't have to agree with everything going on. I'm a follower. I'm a supporter. I'm not a fan. <laughs> what about you? <laughs> so, you have to understand when you come to the point where things need to turn. Things need to turn. I mean, when, th when a change in the form of the way I view the word needs to change. It has come, the way I view it has come to an end. The way I view things have ended. So now I need to change the way I view it, so that's why I need to wake up. I need to wake up. Because why? Because if I don't, I'll miss an opportunity to advance in areas that I've never experienced before. I don't know about y'all, but I'm, I'm weird. I need something fresh regularly. I don't, I don't, I thank God, even as I can say this boldly, but because I think of the way I am, God will feed me things because he know if you just give me Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, I'm going to be bored. 
I ain't coming in here and talk to y'all. You know, Abraham did. I didn't know Abraham. I didn't know Isaac. You don't know him. None of us don't know him. Let's talk about something that's relevant. And I believe because I'm like that, he always challenged me to see things differently. Don't look at it like you looked at it before. Don't do that. So then you come, I said it uh, Sunday. We need to have daily expectations. If you're not going to become dry and complacent, you have to have daily goals, daily uh, focus, expectations, things you want to, in your Christian walk, on your job, in your marriage, I don't care where it is, in your relationship, you ought to have daily expectations. I want to know you better. Married for how many years? But I want to know you better. You might think you know me, but you don't know me. You only know the part I let you see. <laughs> There's a lot more to me that you don't know about. So, so you ought to always be in, in, in anticipation of knowing me better. You think it, most, you know why people, some people so complacent with church, they think they know me. People say, oh, I know I've been around. You don't know me because if you know me, you wouldn't know better. You don't know me. I'm never satisfied with yesterday. Ooh, didn't God move last week? So, it ain't coming back. <laughs> I can reminisce on that, but ooh, I remember that Sunday. Man, you're drifting on a memory. What about the present? The Bible says he's a present help. I need him in my present. I need him now. I want to know him better. I need him every single day. I need him to show me something else that I didn't know yesterday. That's what keep you alive. That's what keep you enthusiastic. That's what keep the joy of the Lord. That's what keep you uh, just striving and pursuing God when you know that there's more. So he equipped us to succeed. I said that earlier. We, most people are lawyers when we agree. But living in reality, you can't live in reality and live in your past. Or try to live in your history or your future. You have to focus on now. What am I doing now? There's power in the name of Jesus. What am I doing with what God has delivered me? See, until y'all see miracle signs and wonders, you'll never see me happy. When someone walk in and the lame legs walk, oh, glory to God. Oh, I'll be one happy dude. Because the Bible said, and I see, he said, the latter shall be greater than the beginning. And we see when the church first was introduced, they was introduced with signs, wonders, and So how we get so complacent that we think we just okay? You come in here pious and looking like you ain't trying to get closer to God. <laughs> because you don't believe it's more. There's so much more. I saw it, and I, I, I wrote this today too. When I when I had wrote about the followers and and the fans, I said to myself, I said, if people, how did I say it here? If you can walk away easily, if you can just walk away easily, that means you ain't connected. Something make you mad, you can just walk away. You are not connected. Because look at Peter. When Jesus, they, so many of them was offended because they thought he was a freak. Jesus said, you can't be my disciple unless you eat my body. <laughs> they said, Jesus done tripped and drank my, they thought Jesus had got into it, that cannibalism or something. They thought he, Jesus had went crazy. Talk about eating my body. <laughs> Can you imagine? 
You can't be a disciple of mine here at Rivers unless you eat my body. <laughs> See, I just lost the rest of y'all tonight. <laughs> but look at Peter's response. He said, you going to leave too? Peter said, where am I going? If I'm connected, where am I going? If this was been sustaining me, this is what I've been receiving. Like, where am I going? If this is where God has brought me to this turning point, my eyes have been opened. I'm in a place that I've never experienced God like this. Where am I going? You can't say nothing to run me away. You might can say something to make me come after you more. Look at look at look at look at what Elijah when Elijah told Elijah. Follow me. He start following him. And he talking about going and say bye to his mama, bury the dead. He said, well, what I got to do with you? You got, to, you got other business? Go. Most people, well, he's so insensitive. That's my family. He had to just drop whatever, could, his oxes, everything, and just the man of God said, if you're coming with me, let's go. I told y'all something a while back. Y'all ain't gave me no answer back yet, none of you. Ain't nobody gave me no answer. Why y'all ain't give me no answer when I ask y'all stuff? What's wrong with you guys and girls? <laughs> What's wrong with y'all guys and girls? Remember I told y'all, I said, uh, what was the significance of Gilgal, uh, Bethel, Jericho and Jordan. And y'all was going to get back to me and tell me y'all ain't told me nothing. See, I got notes why I wrote down. <laughs> so since y'all didn't do y'all Bible study, I'm going to give you a brief synopsis of what it means, okay? All right? So when you looked at in, 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 in 1 Kings 19 chapter, Gilgal was his training at the spot. That was where he got trained in Gilgal. Joshua 5, Bethel is where he had to die to his will. Jericho, according to Jeremiah 31, 32, it says is where warfare takes place. When you get ready to cross and go, in, when you get into Jericho, warfare takes place. And then the Jordan is the place of vision and revelation. Because once you cross over, you see God. <laughs> I ain't going to repeat it either. Nah, y'all gonna, gonna have to go back to the, the live stream and search it out. <laughs> I had forgot that, that I, I threw that at y'all one night and I didn't tell y'all the answer, but uh, <laughs> I like to do that. But uh, my point is this. Every stage of your Christian walk, there's something God is doing. Stop acting like you, I'm saved, now I'm just waiting on the rapture. You know, that's what the old people used to say. I just can't wait to Jesus crack those easy. No, there's every stage of your life, is God is preparing you for something. There's something you should be learning. Every stage, every day is a new opportunity. Every day is another opportunity that God has granted you. He bless you with another day of opportunities. Now, do you view it like that? That the day is a new opportunity for me to see something that I never saw before. And when God was dealing with me about that, I said, wow. He said, I'm trying to see why I wrote that. that I wrote that so I want to make sure I said it right. But he said, every day presents you. Every day is a blessing for you to experience something new. Every day. So now watch this. So if I become complacent, I'm just saved now and waiting because if I die, I don't want to go to hell. <laughs> Dry religion. And watch this. And if you don't not careful, you would dry up. You would dry up. If you don't see reality and you don't see things happening, you can come to a place that you uh, dry up and you feel like life is hopeless. 
So I'm getting ready to close here. God want to stretch you. And you have to be willing to not think where you are is enough. If you don't get some strength, if you don't get some strength, you will collapse over time. Stop eating. And one day you'll be walking down the road and you'll just fall out. I'm, make, I'm bringing it, they're making it simple here. If you don't get strengthened in what you believe, eventually it collapse. So ain't no need of thinking you get come to church. Oh, I'm, a, I'm just going to church and I'm just going to hear the word. I'm just going to be, that's going to be it. If you don't begin to become more and more enthusiastic, you will collapse. Pretty soon you, you just dry and you got nothing but dead, dry religion. Because if there is no experience, daily experiences, relationships dwindle. That's how relationships remain. They have daily experiences. Because you ain't going to always swing on the chandelier. <laughs> you have to have some daily experiences. That's what makes it straight. But see, we, we have stuff we do every day, my wife and I. We can watch a movie. We can play a game. We can watch family. We, there's always something we do to strengthen our relationship. It, it's not, if you don't, it's going to collapse. One day I'm going to look over there at you. You're going to look at me because you're boring me. You're so boring. Man, I'll be happy till I come here. Once I step in the door, I'm miserable. Now, I know, I know some of y'all done said that before. <laughs> You're all right till you get home. You playing music in the car and celebrating and everything, and then as soon as you walked in the house, you're like, oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Let me get out of here before I get in trouble. Do you think you're an exciting person or do you think you're a boring person? That's personal. Yeah. Do you think you are a, do you think people enjoy being around you or they just tolerate you? That's a personal question. I don't want no answer. Are you exciting? And when you're around people, do they, it does it cause you uh, both persons to enjoy that time together or do that time together become grievous? Nobody want to talk to me. Come on. <laughs> you have to strengthen your life with things that makes you even more attractive. People want to be around you. Come on, y'all. Somebody come say something to Because I can keep talking. But you got a strength. If you don't get some strength, you're going to collapse. Push. Look around. You're going to be gone. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Good evening. How are you, Bishop? I'm doing fine. How, How are was you? your day today? It was good. Thanks for asking. But, okay, I, I learned that. On the way here, um, I tuned in, and Bishop, you posed a question. You were talking about the guy at the Pool of Bethesda. Mm -hmm. And you said, he basically said to Jesus, you know, every time the water is stirred, there's no one here to put me in. Mm -hmm. And Jesus simply asked him one question, wilt thou be? So it made me think about how we're always running to God with the broken pieces. Mm. The pool was there. Everything he needed was there. The pool was stirred. It wasn't just sitting still. That means God was already there, but he needed to see an actual person to believe that he could have been made whole. So it just made me look at my own life and we run to God, even when we come in church, Bishop stated that we come in and the glory of God is here. And it just takes us to go a little further than the norm. But we are so content in what we do, what we've done, what we've seen worked before, 
So we try to do it again. And God was saying to me that stop coming to me with the complaints when I've already provided you the provision. So that's what I got from that. And then you also posed a question, Bishop. You said, how did we get here? Mm -hmm. And I wrote here, it said, uh, the scripture that basically was talking about who had bewitched us, Mm -hmm. meaning you did run well. And uh, it, it brought me back to the point where you said back in the Bible days, they did not have church. They had God. So for us, we've gotten so content in being in the building that we forget that we carry the power. We tell people all the time, the building is not the church. We're the church. We're the church. But are we activating our power? Are we using our power? He's already in us. The Holy Ghost, we have him. He's there to strengthen us when we need him. So are we showing others that we walk with the power or are we only showing the power when we're in the four walls? Wow. So it makes them believe that, oh, I don't have to go there to have God. I have God every day. Mm -hmm. But we're like, no, no, come over here, come see a man versus taking all the word that the man of God has already given us throughout the years, throughout the months and utilizing it, activating that faith. And I wrote down one more thing. Uh, You asked, do I know how to execute on his behalf? And I answered the question, Bishop. I said no. I said no. Why did I say no? Because if we did know, if I did know how to execute on behalf of God, I would be walking in the power. Meaning that doubt has creeped in. Not only fear, but doubt now has crept in. Because we don't see the moves the way we want it. So we're not really executing on God's behalf. His behalf is to go out. Once you've been strengthened, you go strengthen someone else. Instead of you being strengthened and keeping that strength and working that strength by yourself. But you're not getting anyone else. You're not compelling no one else to come in the kingdom. So Bishop, I feel like we would have to unlearn the traditional church. We would have to create that relationship with God again in order for us to be walking in the power. Amen. That's very good. And I agree because the thing, that's why God challenging me now. I, I noticed that people sometimes, they can be in church and they seem like they struggle just to tap into God. And all you got to do is go touch them and they go off. I mean, them days, that's enough is enough. Come on. You have to learn how to go there on your own because nobody might not be there sometime. And you waiting on somebody to lay hands on you and, and, and they might not come. And I've learned this like with children. When you want children to stop depending on you for something, you have to make them do it themselves. You don't keep doing it for them. When they're little, you do it for them. But when they get older, you don't do it for them. I don't care how much mess they make. We put them in a high chair, we give them that food, and it be food everywhere. A little bit get in their mouth. <laughs> but eventually, and the kids so smart, if they can't get it in their mouth with their spoon, they throw the spoon down. They don't care what they look like. And food be all in their face, all in their eyes. In their, when you finish, you got to go put them in the tub. But they ate on their own. And, watch, and over time, they learn how to eat on their own. But if you sit there and fed them forever, let them make a mess. They got to make a mess sometimes. But you can't just think God has us here. Remember I said Gilgal was where you get trained. That's where he met with, with, with Elisha, Gilgal. Remember he took him to Gilgal, followed him to Gilgal. And he trained him there. That's where training take place. You have to learn how to do some stuff on your own. And if I keep coming here every Sunday pacifying you, so the only thing I'm going to do is provoke you to go after God. I'm, I'm not saying I'll never lay hands, because the Bible says lay hands on, yeah, and sometimes you, that's how you depart spiritual gift. But every time you need something, I can't speak a word like the satirian. You don't have to come to my house. Just speak a word. You don't have to be here. Jesus, you don't have to be here. 
I can execute on my own. And that's what God, I believe, is teaching the river church. And the reason the river church is struggling because they see what everybody else do. And they want to be like them people over there. But I believe when God ready to take you to another level, he have to train you for the promotion. Mm, come on. Yeah, you have to be trained for the promotion, right? Good evening, everyone. Good evening, Richard. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you, Franklin. Church, the bishop is doing well. We asked already. Yeah, we asked already. <laughs> I'm doing very well. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this uh, message, this lesson. I, I, I told you on you guys on Monday night where my mind was when we were having our discussion, you know, like, why can't, the very same thing, why can't I do the healing? Why couldn't I touch someone and their eyes and their eyes become open? Because we are, we're doing what we know or what I thought was it. Let me ask you something. I got to ask or I'll forget. If you saw a man walking down the street blind, would you be bold enough to go ask him, can I pray that God will open up your eyes? No, sir. So how are you going to see blind eyes? <laughs> <laughs> that says what came to my mind. No, 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 but that's good. You know why? Because my mindset is that the blind is going to come in the church. Got to come through those doors. It's going to come through those doors, and then we're going to heal it. And that's why I say thank you for this lesson. Yesterday, uh, Monday's discussion opened my eyes, and you, bring, you brought a lot of truth to it. Um, you started today by talking about um, a new era. And it brought my mind to, there's a company in Jamaica called New Era Homes. And the company I work with was well, kind of Next Era Energy. And the, what, I, what I've noticed about the two is New Era of Homes, it's, it brings a different style, a different fashion of homes. That they, it's, it was a new company and they just started building different, not the traditional homes, not what we're used to. And so everything was different. They made a lot of money. The company I work for, Next Era, owns FPL. They are at a different level in the energy industry. We try a lot of things. We are doing solar. We're doing a whole lot of stuff. It's new. And so when you, when you mentioned uh, we were entering into a new era, what came to mind is that so we are entering in, God is pulling us into a time where everything is new. So what we, beca what we became familiar with, what we got used to and thought this was it, this is how it will be. That's not it anymore. It's taking us somewhere where things are not going to be familiar. They are going to be better, but they're going to look different. So we have to open our minds now and be willing to accept that things are different, but it's still a home. Still, it still, is, it still has the same purpose. It's still going to get you to the place, but this is how God is doing it. So we can't be traditional. I like when Bishop said, uh, I don't know Peter, I don't know James, I don't know John. We don't know them. So let's talk about us. Because the, the, the old place, the, those old things that we were familiar with, those are the things we got comfortable. But let's learn what God is doing. Let's learn what he's saying about this for now. Because what I'm, what I, what I'm getting now, I, I'm beginning to realize that this era where the power in the name of Jesus, it's where we are being exposed, are given the truth about where the power lies. You see, uh, in science, in my industry, there, there, we, we, Energy cannot be created or destroyed. It just changes its form. That's a scientific statement. And now we're talking about this power. In, like I said, when he just introduced it, my, in my mind, I just saw, I, I knew Jesus had power. Because the Bible tells us that he has power. But then there, our experience brings something different. When you experience the power, it's almost like it is, it's, it's, diff, it's transformed. It's not, just the, it's not just power that you hear about, but it's no power that you experience. 
And I, and, and I believe, as the man of God is, was teaching tonight, we all have that new the ability to get to be um, exposed to this kind, this new power, with the one that we are more involved in, but it requires some changes. There are some things that we are doing that is keeping us tied to what we know or how we view the power. But then there, but the, if we make this change that he's talking about, we make these adjustments, then we will, really, we'll, we will experience the real power that Jesus Christ has given unto us. And then, Bishop, you also said, we can't see God because we don't leave room. For, and that is, that is so true. Because I thought about it and my mindset, my attitude, my habits is that God is working it. God is going to work this thing out. But I am still working my plan. I'm still working my plan. Oh, God is blessing us. God is, and, and, and I work what I think he wants me to work. But it is still my plan. Never, is, it is not that he says, all right, I, 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 I am sensitive to, enough to what he's saying. So for me to understand, okay, he's saying, this may look good, but I want you to go that way. If it looks good, and it looks like God, because good is not necessarily always God, but it looks good, this, I'm following this because I think this is what is best for me. And so I don't leave room for him, because now I get caught up in what I think he wants, and then I'm work, that's what I'm working. That's what I'm following, because, oh, God is blessing me, and God is with me. So I just automatically assume that this is the path. And so I don't leave the room for him to do, even though I'm saying it is God that is doing. And, 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 and that is so true because uh, a lot of times, we, we get m mediocre results and we say, look at God, when there is just so much greater. The testimonies were coming. Um, um, the other night, when uh, on Sunday, when because we sowed the seed and people were giving their testimonies, and I thought about it, and I'm like, okay, but there is just so much more that we can get. If you look at our obedience, we were we were obedient to that one request, and we saw a result. Look how many people came and said, "This is what they experienced," because we were obedient to that. But then we tend to, or I, I, I tend to limit myself to what I can understand. And so I get mediocre results and I think that, okay, look at God with just the mediocre, mediocre result. When the, the, the word has passed that he's going to give us more than we can even ask or think. But I accept mediocre results because that's all I can see. And the last thing I have here is Amaya follower or am I a fan? And I love that. I love the way you put that, Bishop. Because when you're a fan, you celebrate. You always celebrate. And you know what? We love to be celebrated too. And so that's how we fall even in the trap of the enemy. Because there are so many people celebrating us. It's, it's all celebration. But who's following? Because the moment things don't go right, the moment you say the wrong thing or you don't do what someone expects, you're not being celebrated anymore. If you look at the celebrities, the, 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 the athletes are, are, are Hollywood stars, they have so many fans. But when scandal comes, it is the same very fans <laughs> that start spreading all the scandal. It's the same fans, the same people that celebrate them. They're the ones that bring the scandal and then they lose their contracts. They lose everything that they had. All the, these contracts that they signed, they're pulled because they were called in. You're, I'm a fan of yours. Come and do this for me. We have this contract. But then they lose it. So they didn't have followers. They had fans. And I believe that is very powerful, Bishop. It, it speaks volume. It speaks a lot. I don't want any followers, any fans. I want some followers. Amen. And I don't want to be a fan. I want to be a follower. Amen. Stay with, stay, stay, stay with me. Walk with me a while. <laughs> um, I was thinking, and you was talking very good. That thing captured me when you was talking about the miracles. And then I started looking back where I saw the greatest miracles 
wasn't where I went thinking I could perform a miracle. Does that make sense? So where you live? You live pumping though, right? So what if there was four streets over from where you live? Four streets over and down three or four houses and then across the street in a curve. There was someone <laughs> praying and crying out to God for an answer. Could God lead you to them? You're walking with God. Can God say, Richard, I want you to get up this morning and I want you to go four streets over, three houses down and go across the street and you're going to see a house in the corner. And there's a man there crying out, I want to heal him. Now, if you were able to follow those instructions, you think God wouldn't heal him? Yes, definitely. And that's why we don't get the miracle. We want to go heal the people we want to see healed. <laughs> we got some people we want to see healed. God, I want you to heal them, my cousin, them. <laughs> we got certain people we want God to heal. But when you look at the healings in the Bible, and I never forget the woman of God when I went to Caicos. I told y'all, she got up and, and she was gone and we was hot. We didn't know where she was at. And then she come back singing to the Lord. Say, the Lord, just tell you how she is. We're like, where you been? And I guess y'all she told us, like, well, I must be about my father's business. God told me to get up and go. And she went down, she said, walk one street, turn this way, turned another way, and got there. And God said, that was the house. And she went up to the house, and there was a lady in there sick. Prayed for the lady. The lady got healed, and the lady came to the church to the, to the revival that night. And so then I was thinking about my life. I remember the one other miracle I saw. This man didn't believe in God. He used to go to church. Said was a minister, but he said, I don't do that church yet. So when I first, when God told me to go pray for him, I said, you believe in God? I don't believe that. And he used that S-H word. I mean, he said, I don't, I said, ooh, ooh. But God had told me to go pray for him because he had leukemia. He was going to Penn State Hospital. And God said, go pray for him. I couldn't do it. When he told me he didn't believe, I was done. Because God told me to go pray, and I went over there asking him, do he believe? See how we are? Because we don't want to pray if he don't believe. Because, you know, Jesus couldn't heal them when they didn't believe. And God forced me. I get told, I can't got time to tell it all tonight. I'll tell it another night. But some of y'all heard it before. But when I prayed for this man, finally, prayed for this man, thought I prayed the most lousy prayer because I never had prayed for nobody, so I was doing one of them little old quick, like, Jesus name prayer and da 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 and I was done. And I left, and I felt good because I had done what God told me to do. Less than two weeks later, I get a letter in the mail. He mailed it to my house and told me what happened after I prayed that day. He said, you know, when you prayed for me that day, I have, with leukemia, they normally have high fever. He said, the amazing thing, when I woke up that morning, the fever was gone. He said, the fever was gone. I had, had the fever been like this for weeks. Every day, just, that's why this thing was getting worse. And, said, and then when I got on the plane and I went there, and, you know, they take their results and they go to the hospital and they test them there. And he said, when I got there and they did the test and they compared it to the test that I had, they asked me, why was I here? Said his white blood cell had dropped by thousands from the test he had when they diagnosed him and was sending him to this hospital for treatment. Thousands of white blood, you know, leukemia, they have all the white, thousands, and I forget how many thousands, Drop back down to normal. So they asked him, why was you here? He said, because what you were showing us, we did a test and it's not like that. He said, I just wanted you to know that. That that day you prayed for me, something changed. Now y'all know I could have slept that day. 
Hey, I ain't need to be in church. I could have stepped at home like, thank you, Jesus. Oh, God, miracle worker, wonderful, <laughs> light in the darkness. I was ready. <laughs> I saw him move. Every time I saw God move, it's like he led me to the place where somebody he wanted to heal. So think about it. We don't got so complacent at church. We're not even, do y'all pray like we used to pray? Lord, lead me to somebody today that I can be ministered to. No. Because if he told you to get up and go tomorrow morning, you're going to tell him, I got to go to work. I got to be there by 8. <laughs> I got to be there by 8. I'll go maybe after work. The man might die by then. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't going to get no miracle. They're going to tell you he died. As, as he spoke, that's exactly what I was thinking. Really and true. If he had told, if he had given me, when would he have given me that anyways? Because when I wake up, I'm rushing to the shower. Mm. And, I have, and I have to hit the road. And, and you know, and that needs to change. Because I, Bishop, I'm telling you, I, I made up in my mind that if I am going to be doing this thing, I want the power. I need to be a part of it. It makes no sense like coming, we, we talk about it, coming in day in, day out. We're coming in and we're coming, we're raising our hands and saying we believe, but just not, but not experiencing the power, but being powerless, it, it just makes no sense to me. And I, I think I'm at, my mind is made up. It's outside. That's why I ever sent, I talked to the preacher today. This man is so excited. And I said it from day one. I said, when he asked, it's like I felt compelled. I know there's going to be supernatural things there. Every time we go somewhere, we see different than we do here. But there's going to be such a move of God in Carolina. Y'all watch what I tell you. I don't know. We might see some blind eyes and open and stuff. But because when you get in the environment or the place where God want to work miracles, he works miracles. He ain't going to do it where I want to go. If he said, okay, this is, I'm going to do some miracles here. I want you to go here. There's going to be some miracles. There are going to be miracles. And it's not because I went. It's because I'm in the timing of God. And that's why we have to be careful. And can we be sensitive enough that when God tell you, go, you just go. Because watch this. If he told you to go in the morning, you were getting ready for work. You think if you went and healed somebody, you're going to lose that job? No, I ain't losing no job. God might give you a raise. <laughs> you get a bonus when you go back. <laughs> they be like, I don't know what happened this morning. Maybe you was out going on another interview, but we don't want you to leave, so we're going to give you 40. <laughs> we're going yeah, to give you more money just in case you was contemplating leaving. <laughs> Set up. Oh, y'all get ready, get ready, get ready. Praise the Lord. Praise How are you doing, sir? I'm doing fine. Thanks for asking. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. Praise the Lord. Y'all such kind people. Yes. How y'all doing? Well, praise the Lord. I tell you, I tell you, Bishop, uh, when you were teaching tonight and talk about the Pharisees and, and doing your teaching tonight, I, I just couldn't help but think about how stuck I am. I'm stuck. I couldn't help but think about it. And that's, what, and that's what I begin to get out of the message tonight, that I'm how stuck I am. Um, so I was thinking about uh, a couple of weeks. No, no, last week. It was actually last week. Was I, I, was, uh, I was coming home from, uh, I believe, from Jupiter. So I was on I-95. Then all of a sudden, I got that message uh, on the on the display about uh, about the air pressure and uh, saying how it was like thirty something, then it just started going down. It was just going down. It was just going down. I, so apparently I I hit something while I was on the road. I was on I was on my way somewhere, and I hit something while I was on the road. Apparently, and all of a sudden you know it, the display came and let me know that the the air just started going out. It's going down and it's going down. You know, that's that's just funny how sometimes in, in life some things are just kind of knock the air at you. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And, and you just see the air, you just see it declining and 
declining and declining. I seen it. I seen it. It was going to 22, 19, uh, 16. I'm like, oh, well, I, I better pull over. So I pulled over on the side and then until it went down to like five, six, uh, seven, uh, zero, I was stuck. So I was, I was stuck right there. And that came back to my mind of how I was on my way somewhere and I hit something, it began to just take all the life out of me. It, it began to take all the air out of my, the, the thing that was carrying me somewhere. And I got stuck. I got stuck right there. And, and so here I am, I'm stuck there. And I'm trying to use, you know, the things I got, the jack that I had, you know. And I used that jack before to uh, change, change my tires. It's a pretty good jack. But for some reason, it just seemed very, like, dangerous. It seemed like it just wasn't working. When I was jacking up, it seemed like that jack was going to fall. It seemed like, so it seemed like I didn't have what it take at that time to get myself unstuck. Hmm. I didn't have what it takes. And this is, is a funny thing. You know, you, when you um, stuck on, on I-95 on the road like that, uh, they have a service, the, range, the road ranger. They'll come by and, and uh, help you. So, but, you know, they just happen to where they just happen, happen to see you. And so one pulled up behind me after a while. You know, I'm sitting there just trying to figure out, like, I'm, I'm going to do this without killing myself. You know, because it seemed like it was going to fall off the, uh, the jack. And so uh, he, uh, he was just parked there for a while, and he, 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 he called me over. And, uh, and I was like, huh? What, what you want? I was, I, you know, I was acting like, like, what you want? What you want with me? What you want? And so when I went over there, he was uh, uh, telling me, uh, uh, so I see you uh, with your problem here. You, I, I can help you out. And I was like, first thing I said to him, did you let, I ain't got no money. <laughs> you know, and you know, it's crazy I said that because I forgot years ago they helped me out. It's a free service. And so I said, I ain't got no money. You know, it's something how God sent some help to get me unstuck and I didn't want to accept the help. Here I am stuck and I did not want to accept the help that was sent there that wasn't going to charge me anything. To get me unstuck. And so he had all the right tools it took, and he jacked my truck up, changed the tire, and I was, I was on my way. And so I thought about that when I was hearing this lesson, because I realized that I just got stuck. I got stuck, and I got to accept the help that God's given me to get me unstuck. Um, wow. It's something that, um, now I'm going to tell you, when, when the word came for um, more than you can ask or think, I immediately started thinking, oh, God, going to bless me now. Oh, Jesus, I'm going to get, the, I believe this word, I'm going to get some blessing. I start thinking about how I'm going to get some money. I'm going to get an increase. I'm, I'm not going to lie to you. Increase money. Now, I don't think nothing wrong with that, but that was my mindset. And the thing is, Pretty much when it comes to when, when, I, when, when, when I hear God blessing, first thing come to my mind is money. But you know what? In this power in Jesus' name, God dealt with me. He said, don't think that your power is forget you money. And, and so, I mean, really, he really stopped dealing with me with that. And so I began to uh, pray in, in my prayers, Bishop. That Lord, it's funny that how you, what you all, you and Richard was talking about, because I begin to really ask God sincerely, well, Lord, lead me somewhere. Mm -hmm. Lead me to a person. I want to see the power. Just like Richard was expressing, I said, Lord, I want to see it. Yeah. I say, I'm, just like Richard was expressing, I'm tired of coming here and I see what the, because we just did Bible study what Peter did. I'm tired of reading about that. I want to see it. I want to see it. I say, Lord, if you give me this opportunity, if you lead me, so if you make, make it available, I'm going to be bold enough to ask. And it's funny how you ask Richard that. And so my answer would be to that, yes, because I'm expecting it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what I asked him. I said, if you give me this opportunity, I'm just going to do it. I'm going to do it. And it kind of reminded me of the uh, years ago when you sent this out and said, if you go out and pray for somebody, you're going to get some results. And I went out and did it. I prayed for this lady 
who had these tubes in her. And it was just, she had a bad condition. She was just a whole bunch of stuff just oozing out of her. And, and I said, can I pray for you? Because that was a season. Bishop told us to go out and, and pray for somebody and watch. You're going to get some results. So I did it. And when I came, I was working for her. And when I came back the next day, she told me it had dried up and she didn't need that tube anymore. She was so excited about it. She gave me $100 and said, you put this in the offering. And I put it in off. I didn't send it. <laughs> I knew you wanted to keep it, didn't you? <laughs> I sure did. Hallelujah. That was a test within itself. But I passed it. <laughs> because I ain't had to tell y'all nothing. <laughs> but I, I told y'all, and I, I, put it in, I put it in the offering. But that's what I'm, I'm expecting it. Because like uh, Richard said, I, I want us in this season, I want to see the power. I'm, it's not all about how God going to bless me with some money. I want to see the power that is in Jesus' name. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Thank you, Minister Lewis, for giving me the jump start that I needed. Getting stuck, because that's what I believe I, where I am right now. And thank you for helping me to see tonight. Bless you. So, there was a couple of principles and challenges that I experienced in life. And Bishop says, what have you left undone? Mm -hmm. And I said, I asked myself that question because I knew on the inside there is something I left undone. Then he started challenging me more. He said, do I know how to execute on God's behalf? And then he went on to say, he gave me the answer. He said, focus on the principle, and that is how to get you where you want to go. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? Then the bomb was, am I a follower or a fan? Mm. He gave us the principles, the answers, and he helped us to open our eyes. Me, open my eyes tonight. Because there is something. God's been dealing with me on. And I kept making excuses, and it's someone that I have to go and speak with. And I know it's urgent because I believe the person is who God's going to use to bring her family and her grandchildren into the kingdom. So I know that's something I have to do. She's not far away, but am I willing to execute on God's behalf? And I say, yes, Lord, I will. I will do it. And when I pray, I say, Lord, give me that opportunity. And the opportunity is looking me right in the eye, and I have not stepped out. So, thank you. Amen. To God be the glory. <laughs> and, and, and I was just writing when she was talking. I think what most of us have left behind is the sacrifices that's needed for the relationship. Any relationship, there has to be sacrifices. You can't be in a relationship and everything has to fit in your schedule. Oh, God, I just messed up somebody right here. <laughs> that just slipped out. Everything got to fit it within the confinements of what, I, you know, the way I like it. You know, I like it like this. <laughs> what if they don't like it like that? I'm getting out of here before y'all get me in trouble. Thank God for all of you watching by way of live stream and those that are here. We very good uh, class tonight. Thank you for y'all participating and sharing. Always good to have some uh, responses after you finish teaching. It helps, and I go to write more notes when y'all are talking. And thank God for you guys and your willingness to participate. Thank God for you watching on live stream. They're giving means of giving. As you decide to do so, God bless you and keep you as our prayer. Now, Curtis, let me share something with you.